Welcome to the Online Abuse, Neglect, and Exploitation Training for Volunteers and Contractors. A critical area of our profession is to protect the children that we supervise. We have a legal, professional, ethical, and moral obligation to protect children from acts of abuse, neglect, and exploitation. We expect everyone in this profession to behave both responsibly and, most importantly, professionally. The purpose of this training is to provide you the information you need to identify abuse and the requirements related to reporting it. Specific information we will be discussing is defined in these objectives. Let's talk about who is responsible for reporting abuse and neglect. The Texas Juvenile Justice Department, also known as TJJD, expects all professionals to report. This can be found in the Texas Administrative Code, Chapter 358. A professional, according to the Texas Family Code, is an individual who is licensed or certified by the state or who is an employee of a facility licensed, certified, or operated by the state and who, in the normal course of official duties or duties for which a license or certification is required, has direct contact with children. Because you are allowed to have contact with youth in our department, you also fall in the category of professional and are required to report. A professional may not delegate to or rely on another person to make a report. This means that the person with first-hand knowledge cannot tell someone else to report the abuse. Our department policy and procedure will dictate specifics, but you must provide in writing documentation regarding how you became aware of the allegation so that it may be sent along with the incident report form to TJJD. A report to CPS must be made directly by the first person of knowledge. This notice may be made by phone, fax, or email and must be documented. Failure to do so is a Class A misdemeanor. We have discussed your obligation to report allegations of abuse, neglect, and exploitation. During the next part of this presentation, we will focus on what we must be reporting. We will discuss each of these definitions individually. Let's look specifically at three different categories of abuse and discuss each in depth. These categories are physical, emotional, and sexual. Physical abuse includes substantial physical injury, threat of substantial harm through physical injury, failure to prevent physical injury, and causing use of a controlled substance by a child. Indicators could include lack of a reasonable explanation for an injury, unusual injuries for the child's age, the location of wounds, multiple or frequent injuries, or behavioral indicators of physical abuse. Behavioral indicators could include frequent complaints of pain without obvious injury, abnormal lack of reaction to pain, becoming aggressive, and destructive behaviors. More direct indicators could be fear of going home or seeing parents, and frequent absences from school. Emotional abuse can be defined as occurring if the child's growth, development, or psychological functioning shows observable and material impairment. Emotional injury is more subtle than physical injury and is more difficult to establish. Emotional abuse can be devastating. It is psychological and emotional injury and often has long-term effects. Substance abuse, crime, suicide, and the perpetuation of violence within families can all have emotional effects on a child. Verbal abuse may take the form of belittling, name-calling, screaming, threatening, blaming, or extreme sarcasm. Dumb, stupid, and worthless are all examples of verbal abuse and should never be said to our youth. The third form of abuse is sexual abuse. It is defined as any sexual conduct harmful to a child's mental, emotional, or physical welfare, as well as failure to make a reasonable effort to prevent sexual conduct with a child. A person who compels or encourages a child to engage in sexual conduct commits abuse. Sexual abuse may consist of a single incident or many acts over a long period of time. 
Males and females can be the victims of sexual abuse. Examples of sexual abuse by non-contact are grooming, special privileges, inappropriate sexual comments, pornography, pos and posting inappropriate pictures on the internet. Now we will discuss neglect. The Texas Family Code 261.401 defines neglect as a negligent act or omission by an employee, volunteer, or other individual working under the auspices of a facility or program, including failure to comply with an individual treatment plan, plan of care, or individualized service plan that causes or may cause substantial emotional harm or physical injury to or the death of a child served by the facility or program as further described by rule or policy. This means that any child under the supervision of the Juvenile Probation Department or participating in a program governed by the Juvenile Board is protected against any acts of neglect. Neglect can be medical and or supervisory. A child's parent or guardian is responsible for either directly providing safe and adequate food, clothing, shelter, protection, medical care, and supervision for the child, or arranging to have someone else provide these needs. Neglect, like other forms of abuse, must involve observable and material impairment or substantial risk to the child. The last category that we will discuss is exploitation. The Texas Family Code 261.401 defines exploitation as the illegal or improper use of a child or of the resources of a child for monetary or personal benefit, profit, or gain by an employee, volunteer, or other individual working under the auspices of a facility or program as further described by the rule or policy. Now we will address types of serious incidents that may occur in a juvenile justice facility and must be reported under Chapter 358. The following incidents must be reported to TJJD. Attempted escape, attempted suicide, escape, reportable injury, suicide, youth on youth physical assault, or youth sexual conduct. A reportable injury is any injury sustained accidentally, intentionally, recklessly, or otherwise that requires medical treatment. We've talked about the what of abuse, now let's talk about the when and how of reporting. Incidents that are reported to TJJD are those that occur within the juvenile justice facilities or programs. Any incident of abuse, neglect, or exploitation must be reported to TJJD and law enforcement within 24 hours. Any incident of sexual abuse, serious physical abuse, or death must be reported to law enforcement immediately, but no later than one hour, and to TJJD immediately, but no later than one hour. Any serious incident must be reported within 24 hours. Incidents that occur outside the juvenile justice facility or program, which include alleged perpetrators of family, relatives, teachers, guardian, etc., should be reported to CPS within 48 hours. All allegations of alleged A&E are to be reported to law enforcement. As per the Texas Family Code 261.103, local law enforcement should be notified in all cases. Again, as previously stated, TJJD is contacted if the abuse occurs within one of our facilities or programs, and CPS is notified of abuse that occurs in the child's home or any other setting other than a juvenile justice facility or program. There are a number of entities to whom we are responsible for reporting abuse and neglect. This section will provide you with contact information for each of them. Allegations that occur in a facility operated by the Texas Juvenile Justice Department should be reported to the Texas Juvenile Justice Department at 
1-877-786-7263. If you suspect, learn of, or are informed of an allegation of A&E, immediately inform the supervisor on duty. You will be asked to complete an incident report form concerning your knowledge of the allegation. Allegations that arise from the home or schools should be reported to TDFPS or otherwise known as CPS. This hotline number is 1-800-252-5400. Allegations that occur in a substance abuse treatment facility should be reported to the Texas Department of State Health Services. When in doubt, report. Please make sure you follow the department's policies and procedures for reporting. If you have knowledge of an allegation or incident of abuse, neglect, or exploitation, you are required to report this information to the supervisor on duty and cooperate with their instructions. The Texas Family Code also addresses false reports. It is a state jail felony to knowingly make a false report of abuse, neglect, or exploitation. Under Chapter 358, TJJD requires that departments prominently display signage regarding their zero tolerance policy against abuse. The juvenile department must also make parental notification if the child is an alleged victim in an incident. This should be done as soon as possible, but no later than 24 hours. Juveniles have the right to make reports regarding allegations of abuse and neglect directly to TJJD 24 hours a day via the 1-800 number. Juveniles shall be informed of this right during orientation to the facility. We have discussed the who, what, when, where, and how of reporting abuse and neglect. If in doubt, report. Please do not try and determine whether or not you should report an incident. Allow the investigators at TJJD to determine if the allegation should be investigated further. This takes us to the next section. How do I protect myself so I do not become the subject of an investigation? Educate yourself. If you have a question at any time, please ask a supervisor. Know the policy and procedure as it relates to the role you are volunteering or working in. Follow that policy and procedure. Operate within the guidelines of your duties. Know the standards. The standards are available at your department as well as online at www.tjjd.texas.gov. As discussed earlier, we are all professionals and must adhere to a certain decorum both in and out of the workplace. We must avoid inappropriate conversations, off-duty contact, there should be no exchange of personal correspondence or gifts, and as much as possible, no one-on-one -on -one situations. Until the conclusion of an internal investigation, any person alleged to be a perpetrator shall be placed on administrative leave or reassigned to a position having no contact with the alleged victim's family and individuals under supervision by the Juvenile Probation Department or participating in a juvenile justice program or the jurisdiction of the juvenile court. It is important to know what is public information and what is not. In all cases, the number of allegations, types of allegations, and the disposition of allegations shall be reported to the public. Except for the reporter's name, TJJD may release case file information to the administrative officer placing department, law enforcement, victim's attorney, victim's parents, alleged or designated perpetrator, and the court prosecutor. Information that is confidential includes the reporter's identity, the TJJD case file, which will include the incident report, internal investigations, evidence, TJJD's reports, and disposition notices. Information may be released according to Chapter 349.59, 
which is access to confidential information. Thank you for participating in the online abuse, neglect, and exploitation training. Please be sure to complete the training verification form and return it to S J Aguirre, A G U I R R E at TarrantCounty.com. The form must be received before you can volunteer or conduct services at our department. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact the PREA coordinator, Shelley Aguirre. The names and numbers of the facility administrator and assistant facility administrator are also listed on this slide. Again, thank you for watching and listening. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact the PREA coordinator, Shelley Aguirre. The names and numbers of the facility administrator and assistant facility administrator are also listed on this slide. Again, thank you for watching.